all the uh, seeds that I started in my earlier video are now ready to go out in the garden. Um, they've been sitting outside in the sun for the last couple of days, starting to um, harden them off a little bit so they'll be able to take the transplanting shock. But as you can see, they've um, grown to a real nice size. Uh, peppers are a little bit behind. They seem to go a little slow this year, but they'll catch up in the end. Um, and we've picked up a couple of geraniums for her plant or two, and um, some more peppers and whatnot that are ready to go out. And um, it's that time of the year to start the garden again. So uh, I have some raised beds that I like to use for um, a lot of my smaller plants and whatnot. So I figured I'd start putting my eggplants in two of the boxes that I have. And these raised beds are all filled with like a 50-50 topsoil compost mix and um, I add some compost every year. So they are really nice dirt and they do grow good plants. Um, and using these 20 ounce cups for starting everything and make it really easy when it comes to transplanting time. Basically you just have to shake it out of the cup and if the roots are not um, overly grown and bound in there you can just drop it in the ground and uh, push dirt around it and you're ready to go. And these are our favorite eggplants. They are a um, Japanese white eggplant. They're a very small eggplant that's just a little bit bigger than a chicken's egg and it's um, basically white and they are just so sweet and they're not bitter as long as you get them before they turn to a yellowish color. So um, after the plants are in, then we go back and we put a couple inches of um, some fine grass clippings on there to mulch them in to keep the weeds down. The best part about the raised beds is you can do a real dense planting and um, still get a good crop out of it. Uh, now here's another box where I put some uh, pickling cucumbers in and I always plant some marigolds around my um, seeds that I start because it really helps to keep the bugs away during the growing season. Uh, here's another box that I did some uh, market more cucumbers in. And then there's another um, tender green burpless cucumber box that I did. Um, we love cucumbers in the summer so I do plant lots of them usually. Now along the one fence I have a bunch of boxes. You can see the peas are already growing. And um, I'll be placing my pepper plants in them this year. And it's the same thing, just um, poke a little hole in the ground and uh, shake the plant out of those uh, 20 ounce cups, put it in the ground, cover it over and you're done. Um, the plants go through very little shock by not disturbing the roots and um, they really do good. I've, I've had a good, good luck since I started using the styrofoam cup. We usually plant between, um, I'd say about six and eight different varieties of peppers each summer just so that we have a good assortment for um, fresh use and then some for freezing and uh, making relishes and whatnot out of. Eventually this whole area with the raised beds will be um, fenced in to keep animals out, but that's still in the future. I'm doing it a little bit each year. Uh, now with the pepper plants in, I go back and I also mulch them with several inches of mulch and um, I still have the other half to finish on the other end as you can see. And I just put some temporary sticks by each plant to mark where I want to put the, um, the heavier stakes that I'll be making in my shop. Oh, there you can see them shortly. Then it's time to go over and start on the uh, main garden. As you can see, I've got several hundred pounds of uh, rhubarb growing already. That stuff starts really early. And um, once you plant one uh, plant of it, it just grows like a weed and um, comes back year after year. So I get out my old, um, I think it's from 1970 or 1972, Joy Built Rototiller that I bought used years ago. And that thing just keeps running and running and running. You just change the oil in it, put some gas in it, and um, it starts on the first pull every time. It's just an amazing old piece of machine that uh, really helps out if you've got a garden. I did go over it earlier in the season to um, grind in all the old mulch and whatnot from last year. So this is really the um, second time I'm going over and killing it. And uh, the dirt's really finally dry enough to start planting in now. So with the um, 
detailing pretty much complete. Next it's time to uh, start laying out the rows for my tomatoes. Uh, several years ago I cut a um, whole bunch of uh, about, I think they're about seven foot long, um, inch and a half square chunks of wood to um, use for tomato steaks. And all they do is I stretch a line and I space these steaks at about two feet on center and I just um, pound them into the ground wherever I'm going to have a plant that will grow tall. This is a uh, pretty much time consuming job but uh, in the end it's worth it to have something good to tie your plants up. Then I take a uh, long spade that I've got and alongside each of the, um, the poles that I put in I go back and I I dig a hole that's at least eight inches deep to plant each of the tomatoes in. Um, I like to, to set them deep in the ground just in case it gets dry or whatnot. They still have some moisture. And don't be afraid to bury most of your tomato plant. Um, they will grow roots on whatever is under the ground, so it doesn't hurt them. All of the uh, tomato plants that I started this year really did great. I'm amazed I did not lose even one plant. So then it's just a really easy matter of um, just shaking the plant out of the uh, cup and then I break the, if the roots are a little bound like that one was, I take and I break the roots up and spread them a little bit flat in the bottom of the hole. And then I just drop the hole, the tomato in and I bury about the first eight, 10 inches of it. And um, that's it. It just takes a couple of seconds for each plant. And it's a real fun job, even though it looks like work. Once the tomatoes start growing, I'll um, probably be out there just about once a week to um, add some new strings and tie them up and um, pick the suckers off the plant so that they don't go real wild on me. Uh, after putting the tomatoes in, then I go back and I um, put six inches of grass clipping mulch, which really helps uh, keep the weeds down and also the heat from the mulch decomposing also keeps the plants warm at night. And then I just go on to start my next row and um, pretty much the same thing. Pound the stakes in uh, rototill and then just bury the plants. Um, in the middle of this all, I needed some more uh, grass clippings for mulch. So I got out my new cyclone right there and I um, pretty much mowed my yard and I got a, um, several bags full of uh, nice short grass clippings to use in the garden and it's just a matter of going back and um, spreading these clippings. I like to go about six inches deep because that way they get enough heat when they decompose to kind of kill the weed seeds and whatnot and you get a lot less weeds. So now I'll just take a, um, I'll spread some mulch and then I'll pound in some more stakes and plant some more plants. and. Um, eventually I wind up with five rows of tomato plants. The uh, first four have stakes for the plants because they'll grow tall. And the last one I use some cages for because they're just going to be a short plant. And everything is now mulched with six inches of um, grass clippings. Next I'll be uh, planting the rest of the garden with, uh, let's see, beans, lima bean, a couple kinds of squash and some corn, but I did not show that here. There are a couple of beds for some uh, red and purple potatoes that I'm going to be growing. Um, next, I'll go back by my house and raised gardens that I already have started. Uh, first, you can see I have a strawberry bed, and they should be coming in in a couple of weeks now. They're starting to get a lot of blossoms on them and whatnot. Then I have um, several gardens in here that have some um, basically lettuce and radishes and... Um, uh, let's see, there's some spinach in there. Uh, I think there's three types of spinach and I plant some cucumbers to grow up on that little piece of fence there. They climb and they fill in well. And uh, there are two or three different types of spinach there. And there's like five different types of lettuce that we love. And um, also a little bit of uh, baby bok choy that we just love to stir fry. Stuff is so great and tender and flavorful when it's young like that. And uh, I just have a gate to my dog park. And once you go through there, there's another two raised beds that I have down there. And basically they're just started. There's a lot of lettuces and um, carrots, some shallots. And then you can see here the kale's getting pretty big. And then there's some dinosaur kale 
and a couple rows of rainbow chard. That'll keep us full of greens. And along the fence, I have a um, another batch of strawberries planted, and I've never seen so many berries on uh, the plants as I have as we have this year. So I'm hoping to have a bumper crop. But so this is pretty much it. This is the start of my garden for 2016. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe.